Dr. Schultz, one of the issues that comes up often when we talk about prostate cancer is BPH. So can you explain what BPH is? I think a lot of men have this issue, and I think when the PSA is rising, oftentimes it gets confused with prostate cancer. Exactly the problem. The um, PSA blood test, which is so valuable for screening and detecting early stage prostate cancer, when it's higher than it should be. Uh, the uh, same exact issue arises when uh, the prostate gets bigger and creates more PSA. People always are doing a PSA test because they're worried about prostate cancer and they're not thinking about how big their prostate is. Very, very commonly you'll see elevated PSA levels in men that don't have prostate cancer but do have an enlarged prostate. There's all kinds of strategies to try and sort that question out. Um, measure how big the prostate is with an MRI or an ultrasound. Uh, there's a number of tests that try and sort out if the elevated PSA is coming from an enlarged gland or from cancer, such as uh, OPCO4K, XODX, Select MDX, and they are somewhat helpful. They're not digital. It's not like yes, no. They just give a percentage. Um, so. The, the PSA has been such a valuable test that millions of people are having this test done every year, but it's got yeah, a lot of imprecision because not only of an enlarging gland, but another phenomenon called prostatitis as well. So just for context, what is a normal size prostate versus a prostate, what size would that be if someone had BPH? Young men have prostates that are about 20, 25 cubic centimeters. Uh, men in my age group have prostates that are around 35, 40 cubic centimeters. And the biggest prostate that I've ever seen, which was only about three weeks ago, was 450 cubic centimeters. So uh, really big is 60 to 80. And so there is a possibility for truly humongous prostates. And the PSA goes up proportionately. So once we know the size of the gland, we divide the volume by 10, uh, so if it's a 40 cc gland, we divide that by 10. A normal PSA is around 4. If someone has an 80 cc prostate, determined by an ultrasound or an MRI, a normal PSA for that individual, even without cancer, would be around 8. Getting the PSA in context by knowing how big the prostate is is a very useful maneuver. What causes a prostate to become enlarged? Like, it, it seems to happen to millions of men all over the world. What is causing this issue? It's never been determined. Theories are that maybe it's low-grade inflammation, which is a very common issue for men, uh, so-called prostatitis, as I mentioned already. But that's never been proven. Uh, it does seem to run in families. Uh, fathers with big prostates will have sons that ha can have big prostates. Uh, the process is progressive. As men get in their 40s or 50s, their prostates start enlarging, and they can continue to enlarge uh, you know, over a 10 to 20 year period. So uh, someone may have a partially enlarged prostate at age 50 and a very enlarged prostate at age 65. So let's talk about symptoms for a second. You know, we watch all these YouTube videos, obviously research for our own channel, and then as we're watching, we'll see these, you know, thumbnails come up where it's like prostate cancer symptoms. And I think a lot of the symptoms that are mentioned in those videos are actually BPH symptoms. I don't think it's really related to prostate cancer exactly. Can you give me some clarity on this? Well, I think you stated it very well. And it is a bit frustrating because until PSA came along, it was universally known that prostate cancer had no symptoms whatsoever until it was very advanced and spread into the bones. You're looking at someone that maybe would have a PSA of 300 or 500 uh, when someone starts to get symptoms from prostate cancer. So it's very disingenuous to talk about prostate cancer symptoms such as urinary problems or getting up at night or uh, urinary frequency uh, or slow urination. Uh, because those are either BPH-related symptoms, BPH stands for benign prostatic hypertrophy, hypertrophy means big, or prostatitis, which is anything with itis on the end, uh, vasculitis, inflammation of the, of the uh, blood vessels, or, or pulmonitis, is inflammation of the lung, prostatitis, inflammation of the prostate. These are um, phenomena that can cause uh, elevated PSA, and possibly prostate enlargement, but they do not lead to cancer. So what happens to the urethra when a prostate is enlarged? Sometimes nothing at all. Not at all uncommon for men to come in and uh, they have a high PSA and we do a scan to see how big their prostate is and we discover that it's 
100 cc's, that's two and a half times bigger than the average prostate. When we queried them about urinary symptoms, because the assumption is that that big prostate is going to squeeze the passageway uh, that the urine goes through the prostate and then out the penis. And so um, the assumption is that that big prostate is going to compress the urethra and create slow urination and all kinds of difficulties. But oftentimes these men with very large prostates have no idea, they have no symptoms whatsoever. They just had a high PSA and they show up and get a scan and we find out that they have a big prostate. So there's not any one-to-one -one relationship between big prostates and urinary problems. Uh, certainly, you can get compression on the urethra sometimes when prostates enlarge, and, uh, and that is only one of a number of urinary symptoms and problems that can occur. Uh, the enlargement compressing the urinary passage uh, through BPH is one of the problems, but people can have overactive bladder or uh, prostate inflammation, as we already mentioned, and, uh, and a lot of other unexplained phenomena that can create urinary problems. Uh, I think it's easy to visualize a big prostate causing a problem, but in my experience, the big prostates causing urinary problems maybe only be one-fourth, one-fifth of the urinary problems we see. We see a lot of People that love to drink eight glasses of water a day, they're going to be urinating frequently. People that have prostatitis or overactive bladder is an even bigger problem. As we get older, the bladder wall gets more irritable and the bladder can't fill and allow as large a volume of urine before it triggers a desire to urinate. So people are getting up at night more frequently, running to the bathroom, have a sense of strong urgency. Uh, which can be very inconvenient. So there's multiple factors uh, that play into symptoms as you brought this whole topic to our attention. And oftentimes it doesn't have that much to do with how big the prostate is, although in certain cases it does relate to how big the prostate is. So we often hear about frequency of urination and other issues when it comes to urinary incontinence and things of that nature when it comes to BPH. Is there any issues with sexual dysfunction? From large prostates, uh, not a whole lot of connection there. The treatment for large prostates, where they uh, will carve out the middle of the gland to open up the urinary passage, these are transurethral resections, laser treatments, microwave treatments, uh, uh, aqua ablation treatments to will carve out. Um, these things will cause men to have dry orgasms after treatment and uh, occasionally result in erectile dysfunction, although that's not a common side effect, it is possible. I know oftentimes I also hear about men calling in and they're very concerned about blood in the urine and that that kind of concerns them and then they call the doctor. Is that related to BPH? Is that any sort of issue or is that sign of something else? Well, it could be a number of things. Kidney stones, um, prostate stones, people aren't aware of the fact that men get calcifications in their prostate and that sometimes they have sharp edges on them and cause some bleeding. The real issue uh, that we can mention in terms of blood in the urine, um, you know, other problems are like infections and whatnot. But uh, the serious one uh, that people don't want to miss would be the possible uh, development of a bladder cancer, which can leak blood into the uh, urine and be t detected in a urine analysis. The issue with that, of course, is that the standard uh, way to check for bladder cancer historically has been to snake a flexible scope up the penis called a cystoscope to look in the bladder, make sure there's no cancer. This is justified to, to um, ensure that early stage bladder cancers are detected at a time when they're still curable. So annual urine analysis is part of the physical exam that people have every year, and if there's blood in the urine, it needs to be further evaluated. But one value-added recent development is a urine test called CX bladder that is very accurate for detecting uh, the presence or absence of bladder cancer. And uh, this is a very attractive alternative to having to go through a cystoscopy. People should be aware of the fact that if their urologist is talking about doing a cystoscopy to evaluate why there is blood in the urine, that it may be a less inconvenient, uncomfortable option to do a urine test called CX bladder. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. We have so much information coming out, not just on prostate cancer, but BPH, prostatitis, men's health. We want to keep you informed and educated on the latest science. The best way to do that is to subscribe to our channel. Also, our website, pcri.org, is there. And if you'd like more information, extended content, it's there as well. And please remember, you are the one that's going to make the best decision for your health. So we thank you for trusting us, but you know, challenge what you're learning go ahead and do some more research. Talk to your doctors about it. We are here to help. And if you need help contextualizing any of that, we're here for you. You can call our helpline at pcri.org. You'll find the number in the form. We thank you and we hope you have a great week.